are taking back our futures! Keystone became a big political issue sometime in 2011. I think it was driven by environmental groups. People are marching against the Keystone Pipeline and want more than just to stop that pipeline. Of course, once it was elevated from one side, it had to be from the other, and uh, it quickly became a symbolic target for pretty much everyone involved in energy. I'm a pipeliner, my husband's a pipeliner, we have a son and daughter that both pipeline also, so it means a great deal for our family. While its fate remains uncertain, the Keystone XL pipeline has come to represent much more than a link between Canada's oil sands and world markets. If you are going to be risking arrest, you're going to be lining up over here. It's now been six years of protests, congressional votes, and growing polarization. We should have building trades, men and women work. Even while the project itself will have limited environmental and economic impact. I want to make sure that if, in fact, this project goes forward, that it's not adding to the problem of climate change. This is one of the nation's best sellers. The environmental movement has long rallied around symbols, from Rachel Carson's 1962 book about pesticides the most controversial book of the year. to more recent images of polar bears atop melting glaciers. Amid President Obama's re-election campaign, activists found their next rallying cry in a little-noticed three-year-old application from a Canadian energy company named TransCanada. It kept galloping along and we had to mobilize to stop it. It just seemed almost unreal that the government officials and regulators and the powers that be would just not dream of permitting it. Keystone proved an attractive target for two reasons. First, the pipeline would service oil sands already notable for their environmentally unfriendly extraction methods. That pipeline is an example of all the bad things about oil, about the subversion of democracy, about the destruction of values, American values, the destruction of our Purple Mountains majesty, the amber waves of grain. If we're building infrastructure, let's build infrastructure that leaves global warming behind. The project was also an inviting political target. Because it crosses an international border, Keystone requires a presidential permit. For activists, this meant political pressure could be aimed squarely at the White House. Some campaigners decided that focusing on a single piece of infrastructure would allow people to score a victory or at least rally attention around climate change. So there isn't just motive here for groups, there's opportunity. Soon enough, the oil industry and their congressional supporters fought back with a strategy largely focused on the creation of American jobs. The Keystone XL pipeline is ready to be built. Mr. President, take action. Keystone is an example of what I'm looking for in the early stages of the new Senate. But recently, lower oil prices have shifted Keystone's calculus. The oil sands have small profit margins to begin with. Now, falling oil prices are making the entire project less practical, with or without the long-term cost savings of a pipeline. Things like the change in the price of oil will have a far larger impact on whether the oil sands get produced than any activist action against a pipeline. And while the economics have fluctuated, the political stakes have solidified. The Keystone Pipeline has become the purest test that there's ever been of whether the president is serious about doing something about climate change or not. It's a litmus test for both sides. A Keystone Pipeline veto uh, would send the signal uh, that this president has no interest in listening to the American people. All this, whether the project scale really warrants it or not. This is a relatively small job creator in the grand scheme of things, uh, but it's also a relatively small contribution to climate change in the grand scheme of things. I don't think many people would have predicted that Keystone would become such a central issue, not only in the country's energy fights, but in its broader political fights. So by that yardstick, the environmental groups that push this have succeeded. <laughs>